All right, Nathan, <laughs> what are we doing today? All right, so we're getting back into the fair lane. We've got the auto back from a good health checkup. It's ready to go back in. A couple of things we've got to fix before it does go back in. Plan today is to get the auto in, engine level, turbo on, exhaust back on, pretty much get everything back to the way it was, and then we can look at our power steering another day. Yep. So I gave the auto to my auto guy. I said to him, I said, can you do a health check up over it? I also got a billet servo. Probably should have Googled what that does before I explained it to you. There is a reason <laughs> for it. I think it puts better clamping force or something. Uh, they do recommend it for going for when you're full manual. I never ran it before, but I thought while it's out, I might as well buy the part and get it installed. So it now has a billet servo. Other than that, uh, we did get a bung put onto the pan. Yep, finally. Yep, because um, Paul, the auto guy, said to me, he's like, it's in great condition, but that oil was just at the edge of its life. He said it's, it was a bit brown, it's getting a bit warm. Yep. So he said to service it more often, so we've got a bung now. So we're good to go back in. Yep, so now we have the joy of putting the No, we have the joy of fixing a rear main leak. Oh yeah, we well, yeah. So right now, the car ha currently has a really bad rear main leak. It's weeping past the crank and past the seal. Yeah. So Michael has come up with a solution to fix that. We think. <laughs> so as we said, this thing has had a rear main leak ever since we built it basically, and it's gradually getting worse and worse. So we have a new one to put into it, but being that this crank is an old crank already when we rebuilt this engine, we wonder whether it might be worn down a little bit. So what I did is I went, I was on the website and I saw that they actually sell a speedy sleeve for these things. And I thought, we've never done a speedy sleeve before. So maybe today might be the day that we try a speedy sleeve. <laughs> I know that these are controversial, some people love them, some people hate them. So, we're going to get it a crack. Let's be honest, this engine isn't going to be in this car forever. Yeah. So, this is just a temporary solution to get it through. First of all, we're going to get this original rear main out, so we can at least look at it. Maybe we'll look at the crank, see yeah. if it looks like it's got a, a wear mark in it, and if it does, we'll definitely put a speedy sleeve on. Yep. And we'll Let's go from it. there. So, I don't know if you can see, but you can see it is sort of leaking around here. Did we put a rear main in this actually? I don't know if we did. Yeah, we did. Did we? Yeah. We didn't do a very good job. <laughs> this is a typical hack shop day. Fixing <sighs> leaks in the fair lane. <laughs> <laughs> On a cold, cold day. It's looking better already. I know, isn't it? What leak? <laughs> oh. Well, we're committed now. <laughs> oh. Did you just slip and hit the crank? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> First try! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've had a couple of cracks at this already, as you can see, and we haven't actually managed to get any bites on this yet, so I'm going to try again. And down here. Oh my god! Because of the rubber, it just wants to walk on it. I'm walking away! Right into the block. <laughs> Pray for us, people. Let's hope this works. <laughs> oh, oh lovely. Lovely. Yes, and the broken drill bit that we had in there came out with it. <laughs> <laughs> we sat the drill bit trying to get this out. <laughs> oh God, we're hacked. And I'm so glad I didn't hear like as it fell in and ended up in here. <laughs> oh God, that's funny. That actually worked really well once we got the hang of it. Oh it's look, like it's worn. Nothing there. No, it's worn, look. You can see the steel rimming through it. Yeah. It's worn down, there you go. On the sides too, it's not even the bottom. Yeah. So what we found is there is actually quite a few nicks in the crank. There's actually a lot. And we've got like a ridge on it. There's like, you can see where the wear mark is. Yeah. And you can definitely feel it with the screwdriver. So we assume that's where it's leaking around from. So to remedy this, we're just gonna put the sleeve on it. All right, so. We've read the instructions. We're just gonna apply uh, a thin layer of ultra copper. Yep, so it says apply a thin layer of non-hardening sealant and this is the closest thing we have to that, so. And it doesn't need, I'm just gonna. It's gonna have to be super thin. Yeah, I just wanna like, just lightly coat it. Like a spurf. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, now the scary bit. We're gonna keep this out. Because my concern is, once we put this on. There's no going back. There's no getting it off. <laughs> yeah, I know. Let me just wash my finger. All right. And now we venture into the unknown. What we did is we measured the depth of this and then sat this across there to make sure that we're not gonna hit the, the main cap at the end of this um, engine here, obviously, because this is spinning and the cap isn't spinning, so we wanna make sure it's not hitting that. 
We have about five mil tolerance, tolerance by Luxford, so this isn't going to be sunk all the way. It's just going to go to where it's flush. Yep. I believe. Well, it's tight. It's tight, that's a good thing. And then you get this cap. Oh my god. Oh god, this is the dodgiest thing we've done. Ah, uh, make it two, make it three, make it either. That's it. Is it going? It is. Oh, I'm heavy breathing. <laughs> I think that's it. Yeah? I think we're home. Let me just give this a wipe so we can see how deep we are and pray to God that we didn't go too deep and send it into the cap. I reckon we nailed it. I reckon we nailed it. That was scary. That is scary. It's not over yet. No. <laughs> it ain't over till the seal's on it. Uh, so we're ready to pop this in now. We've put some oil around the sleeve and we put a bit of oil in here to hope, help it slip on because it is a bit tighter now. Yeah, let's see how it goes, I guess. Well, it's tight. It's definitely tight. If this leaks, I'm going to be calling up Mr. Speedy himself. <laughs> All right, well, that's on. Yeah, we can just uh, pray it seals now. No more rear main leaks. So what I am gonna do now is I'm just gonna run some silicon around here and around here. That way we know the back of the engine is completely sealed. And then I might scuff this up and we'll get to installing the trains. And go from there. To see what happens. And then we get to do the fun we stuff. We get to do the fun stuff, yeah. So I'm making a cake, it's called the no more rear main leak cake. <laughs> and uh, I like to use orange as icing. Uh, it gives it a nice hint of flavor. You really haven't skimped on that, have you? <laughs> <laughs> I did around the sump and I was like, well, I might as well just do one big hit around the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> so the only thing it's gonna leak out of now is past the crankshaft. You know what we should do? We should just seal between the crank and the seal and we wouldn't have any leaks at all. And just don't drive it. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a little bit more confidence in putting more sealer on after I seen the back of Michael's engine built by a professional. Yeah. And when I asked him, I said, how much sealer do you put? And he said, seal the shit out of it. I was like, okay, might as well go for it then. <laughs> so I committed to orange icing. I like it. Yeah. So I'm just running a, a tap through these. Um, not because they're damaged or anything like that, only because the Loctite's still on there from when we had the Loctite in there originally. So we just want to clean that up to get rid of it because if there's one thing we've learned from everyone else's experiences and something we don't want to experience Actually no, Daniel experienced this um, He did in his paddy bomb And his bondier Yeah Flyboard bolts can come loose and uh, we don't want that to happen to us So we're gonna make sure we have the best seal we possibly can As you can tell we're big on seals here at Hackshop Garage <laughs> <laughs> Alright so we're ready to go, I've cleaned the back surface of that I've cleaned the surface of the flywheel and We're ready to bolt it up Alright ready? Yeah. First try! <laughs> Ooh. That's a lot. <laughs> yes. So the auto is about halfway in, but this isn't. <laughs> so now I'm gonna pull the auto back out and slip this in. Most forgotten thing to put in. Rookie mistake. Alright, we are back. That took a lot longer than it needed to. <laughs> well, the auto is back in now. Uh, ready to go onto the fun stuff now. So now we're back at the top. We've got dump pipes to wrap, we've got some plumbing to do. We've got some exhaust studs to put yeah, in. Yeah, little minor things. We've got exhaust studs and stuff like that. So we can probably pull all that back out now. Ooh, it's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they hit the ground. Oh my, oh my God, this is heavy. Ugh. Woo, heavy. All right, so while I do the exhaust studs, Nate's gonna start wrapping this. So the, all we did is we just got a three inch V-band, what did you call that? Yep, and uh, got it welded on. And so now it bolts up to the turbo. Yep, so now it should be good to go. So the good thing is we're reusing parts. This is a environmentally friendly building right here. No wasted parts. So the dump pipe's all wrapped now. Unfortunately, I've ran out of wrap. So this is our screamer pipe. It follows along with this. It looks fully sick. So yeah, I'm just going to paint this, just so it's got something on it. Oh, it was um, rusting anyway, so it needs to be... It was rusting anyway, we did this out of mild steel and the tip is stainless, but, you know, we, we only, we could only do what we had. Yeah. 
So this will do. Hey, if we're painting that, do you want to paint that? You really want to try it, don't you? I really want to see what it looks like. They reckon it seals better and All keeps right. it from moving too. Alright, I'll paint it. You look like you're cooking a marshmallow. I look like you're cooking a marshmallow. Studs are a wee the bit studs bigger. Studs are a little. This is a little out. Look at that. You sure it's the right way around? Yeah, it has to be because this goes at the bottom like there. Well, the thing is, now that you got studs, you could probably just go cut, cut, cut. I reckon, eh? Yeah, because the new manifold would work like that. Yeah. And cut it. Well, yeah, it is out of fair way, and I reckon you're probably a danger of ripping the man the gasket there. Make sure you give yourself plenty. Give yourself extra, don't skimp on it. One. <laughs> genius. It is genius. Very smart. All right, well that was easy. <laughs> well, the fact that that was that tight, I wonder if the exhaust manifold is gonna be all right. We'll see. All right, let's do it, eh? Let's see how good she fits. Come on. Oh. What's it hitting? The bottom ones, bottom studs. I thought they, they might be an issue. You'll get it. It's our heat shielding, that's what's doing it. You just need to dent the heat shield enough to, yeah. so it'll work. Oh, look how much I've dented it. Oh, I did such a good job on that. Bloody hell. Well, I reckon we're gonna make this. I think so. What we're concerned with is the studs are so, gonna get really close to these pipes here, but. Actually, I'll pull this bottom one in. We might be right. How are you going? I'm looking good. Are you almost there? Yeah, gonna yeah I think it's going to miss. Yes! Thank God! For Vegemite toast. How good is working on cars? Oh, so good, man. Love it. Absolutely love it. Especially when it works. Yeah. Yeah, these bottom ones are uh, not so fun. Yeah, we might need to ditch the heater in this thing next day. <laughs> <laughs> if the heater pipe wasn't here, it'd be a lot easier. Yeah. The manifold is now bolted up, it's actually easier to get those last two bolts from the bottom it seems. So that's what we did. So now it's ready to come back down and keep on going. Alright, well that's on. Now up to turbo time, but I think that's going to happen tomorrow. I think we're done for today. Yeah, that is it for today. We're sick of dealing with the, the water coming in. We're, we're working in puddles now. I know we're working on a boat here, but we don't need the whole dock experience. <laughs> Our dry dock is leaking. Our dry dock. That's what's happening right now. At least it's all done, auto's back in, everything's back done up, the exhaust manifold's on. Yeah, all right, we'll see you in the shed tomorrow. See you then. All right, well, it is a new day. It's currently not raining, which is nice because there's no flood or floor anymore. So the misery that we worked in yesterday is not quite so bad today. Yeah, hopefully uh, the sun will shine for us a little bit. But we're continuing on. We're about ready to bolt the turbo on. Nathan has just clocked it so that it uh, is pointing the right direction, I'm assuming. Yes, because it's going to be too hard to do up these bolts on the car. I thought we might as well just do it now. Before we do that, put that on, we probably should we'll probably bolt put the, that fitting on. the turbo drain on, yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. All right, so... With our turbo drain, this is this is our old turbo drain that we used to use, as you can see. It it's our J-pipe drain. It's our J-pipe drain, it left a lot to be desired. But what we're going to do in this case with a new turbo, one, that's not going to fit because it's a different size flange, but two, we did it on the SS now and we're pretty happy with how that turned out. So we're going to do the same with this. We're going to use AM fittings from Raceworks. This one is a much smaller drain here on the turbo, you can see. Comes out to like, almost like an... AN8 line, I think it is. Yeah, it looks like it. But Raceworks makes this AN8, or we're going to say, to dash 10 adapter, I suppose. <laughs> That's going to sit right there, and then we bolt on our AN line fittings from here, and we go dash 10 and go all the way to the sump. So that's good because we have a dash 10 sump plug to go in as well, too, which I have here. Um, yeah, all we need now is some bolts. So we'll go get some bolts. We need a couple of bolts. And what you can see here is I went a little bit crazy the other day, and I decided to make up finally. Our bolt organizer. It's a little extensive, I'll admit, <laughs> but it works. So this is from Costco. Yeah. <clears throat> I seen it and it was what we dreamed of. And then I left it with Michael for a week and he did this. <laughs> <laughs> so what I did is on here, this is actually something my brother made up for us. Uh, it's a thread identification chart. But the benefit is this used to live in our wall. And I'm like, you know what, if I'm gonna have all our bolts here on this traveling cart, why well, don't put it on here? So if you come here, you can go, oh, what bolt am I dealing with? Oh, I'm dealing with an M8 1.25. So you go, okay, I need an M8 1.25. Where are we looking at? Oh, M8, there we go, this is what I want. See, perfect. 
But I figured then we have extra space, so all that raceway stuff that we have, because we're starting to have quite a collection of surplus parts now, <laughs> we can have all this in here as well too. So I thought, you know what, if we're going to have all that, we also need to be identify what parts we're dealing with. So up here, we keep our Raceworks identification tool thingy. <laughs> It's bloody perfect. But it's actually working really well. We've had it running now for what, maybe two, three weeks? Yeah. It's been so much quicker. It's just like, oh, I need something. And it's all there. You can choose from everything. You don't have to rummage through bags. Yeah. It's, it's actually working really well. We still have heaps of room left for more if you want to add some. But we just keep all the Raceworks tools here now because it's easy to get to. And when you're doing like fittings and stuff like that, it's just easier to drag the whole thing to you. So you can actually just like plug and play and go as you need. And the same with bolts. Having a range of bolts and having it organized, this took a lot of time to organize, by the way. <laughs> it's just so much easier to have it all here. Anyway, that's our trolley we were excited about, so we thought we'd tell you about it. <laughs> Back to what we're working on. So, now we can bolt this on, now that we have some bolts. The biggest issue I think we're going to have with this is trying to get this hose through the manifold now. Oh, you want to go through it, do you? Well, around it or through yeah. it, whatever we got to do, because it's going to be pretty close. Yeah. Huh, interesting. What? Having the washer on means that I can't get the fitting up far enough. See the hole? Yep. I can't get the hole up far enough. Looks like no washer it is on one side. Or both sides. Both sides. Or we have to change like an Allen key head because... Oh, even... true. Oh, we don't have any of them, don't we? No, we don't. Oh, wait, 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 wait. what are these? Oh, that's the, um... That's the old that's dump the screamer. The screamer. They will work perfect. So... What we're going to use, we're going to use the Allen bolts. All right. That looks all right. That looks pretty draining. Yeah, that looks good. Beautiful. So do we want to drop that on now? I reckon we drop it on. We won't bolt it on finally because I reckon we're going to take it off to put the turbo drain on. Yep. But at least now we can put it on and hopefully figure out where we're going to route that turbo drain because that's yep. our, probably our last biggest thing on this. I think this so section, as well, yeah. Because the trouble is, like I said, this, watch this, this turbo drain is going to sit right here. And look where it goes. Yeah. Straight into the manifold. Ma oh, that's tight. All right, let's put a 90 on it <clears throat> and see what it hits. So pull the turbo back off. It is going to hit everything. It also goes straight, if you run it backwards, like out the side there and then between the block and the manifold, it goes straight in towards the engine mount. This is a 45. Let's try a 45 because I think, like you said, a 45 is probably our best bet. Yeah. We know that they say that you're not supposed to put a, a 90 straight after a, on a turbo drain because they don't want pulling. But yeah. Like, in my mind, gravity still works downwards, just working at half the rate that it should because it's yeah. working at 45. <laughs> so we're going to see if this works. I mean, we don't have much, there's no other option that you could do. Like, no, there's I'm no just... way this would work any other way. Yeah. So it has to work. All right, well, while we try and figure out where the hell we're going to run this turbo drain, what we should probably do is I need to get this bung in into the sump. So last episode, we tried to do this with what I thought was a BSB, but it's not, it's an NPC fitting. So I've got one now. So I'm gonna put this in with a ton of sealer because if anyone knows how Nathan did this in the first place, it is literally a hole being punched in the side of the tin sump with a big spike and then threaded. And it relies pretty much solely on this sealant to stop it from falling out and coming loose. So the man is accurate. There's uh, it's been tapped. It's been but, tapped, uh, it's... but it's just tapped with like folded metal. Folded metal, exactly right. And, and it was super hard to tap as well. To be quite honest, it actually, when I pulled the old one out, it was surprising how well it was holding <laughs> up and how much thread it had, but we're going to use this. So I want to sink this now because one, I want the RTV to start drying. And two, I need to sort of figure out if I can put a 90 on this and how it's all going to work because this is actually a bit trickier than what we initially thought this was going to be. Next engine, we're welding a bung. Yeah, for sure. Okay, look, it's doing up. I'm just gonna keep going basically until it does up no more, I guess. Yeah, I probably would, wouldn't even put a ratchet on it. Oh, it's just nerve wracking, you know, alloy tin that's not really tapped right. And this is like, you don't want this to come off. No. And spray oil everywhere. And that's a recipe for disaster. Done up? <laughs> yeah, silicon everywhere. Silicon everywhere, <laughs> you did put a lot on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so in typical fashion, we're changing our direction a little bit here. We've had a look. The dash 10 fitting down in there, you know, that's in there at the minute, but it's not ideal. And we were thinking of, it's gonna be really hard to show, but running our turbo drain basically through the in, middle of this manifold here, because really the only place you can go, sort of S it as far straight as we can into that. But being that it's dash 10 line, that's gonna be nearly impossible to do. It's, it's not gonna get that, it's not gonna get a tight radius like that. 
It's yeah. just never going to get it. So, what we're thinking of doing is we're going to ditch the dash 10 and we're going to go to Down dash, to a dash eight, 8, which we assume should work because this turbo drain looks like it's set up to run a dash 8 line anyway. It would also mean that we get rid of the big extender that comes off the bottom of this because they sell it's just directly bolt onto that and then you go straight to your old fitting there, yeah, your adapter fitting there. So you wouldn't be as low, which means we could, could get a better angle coming straight out the side, going towards the block and then running down. That's our plan. Dash 8 line will be way more forgiving to use than Dash 10. So we think that's what we're going to have to go with. So Got no other option. That's it. So unfortunately, we're going to have to leave the drain for now. So we're just going to temporarily bolt this turbo on now. We were hoping to finally fit it today, but it's going to have to obviously come back off. So our dump pipe has dried. And I think the painting method works quite well. It's right, quite stiff now. Feels quite good. It actually doesn't feel as itchy to touch. Like you're not getting fiberglass fibers coming off into your yeah, hand Yeah, it's not too bad. So yeah, I give it a 10 out of 10 to paint it. Yeah, another thing that we like about too is where's the, sp uh, the strands, the, the phrase? So where I've cut it at the end, it's kind of stiffened this up and it's not really going to go anywhere. Yeah, so they say that stops it from actually fraying even further because it seals it all in, I guess. So yeah. It looks alright. It's turned out alright, so I think we're going to use that method more. Thanks for everyone letting us know in the comments. The drain pipe looks really good too. Yeah. Unfortunately, I had to paint it black, but... We might still wrap it, we don't know. We're going to see. Alright, well, uh, time to put it in now. So we can make sure that this all works, because this was all welded off the car. Yep. Um, put the screen pipe on, finish the back, bolt that to the exhaust, make sure it all flows and works. Wow, it looks good. This set looks fancy now. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty sexy. Well, that's it. She's in. All buttoned up. All bolted back together. Looks alright. Looks good. I can't wait to hear that screamer. I can't wait to hear it either. All right, we're nearly done for the day, but Nathan just can't help himself. Because <laughs> it looks so good all together. I and mean, then this is like the piece of resistance. I don't know why. Resistance? So resistance. Resistance. Oh, does it fit this one? Yeah, it does. Oh, <laughs> baby. Holy shit, it makes it look huge. <laughs> Happy with that? Oh yeah, that looks sick. It makes a huge difference though, doesn't it? Yeah, Fairlane 2.0 is looking good. Looking really good. It looks okay, awesome. what are you up to? Boost controller. I'm oh. put, I reckon we put the boost controller in. Yep. And then we call it a day, I reckon. All right, sounds good. Yep. Let's do it. All right, so this is the boost controller that we're going to eventually run. We're not going to run it straight away to get to the dyno. Probably haven't spoken about this yet, but our, we do have new injectors to go in this thing. And we do obviously have this electronic boost controller to go in this thing. We're not going to install them just yet because we figure, we realize what we can do is we can actually drive this car as it is sort of off boost, just put around, hopefully it'll be enough to run, hopefully whatever we change here hasn't upset the tune enough where we can probably just drive it to the dyno as it is. And then when we get there, we can then hook up the new injectors, throw them in, and also hook this up as well too. Yes. Because this is obviously needs to be tuned and everything through the computer. We're not smart enough to do that, that's why we have a tuner named Jake. So we're gonna just sit this in. We already had an electronic boost controller uh, widened this at one stage, uh, we melted it. That's why we're changing it to a steel body one, an alloy body one. <laughs> And the old one sat a lot closer to the dump pipe than this one is going to now. This is the old wiring for the original boost controller. And you can see here where red and black became one and has melted pretty much together here. <laughs> uh, that's not ideal. So we're going to move it. We'll wire this in. It won't, literally won't do anything until we plug it in yeah. and work it. So I'm just trying to find a place to put this now so it's well out of the way of heat and we can run our silicon hose. Yeah. Like I said, in the meantime, we'll just run this in the meantime just to get to the dyno. This is just our boost T. Make sure we don't touch that because that is adjusted to 13.8 PSI. At the yeah, moment. I don't think that's going to work now with that. Oh uh... yeah, it means nothing. <laughs> oh wait, it'll mean nothing because of the wastegate. Yeah, it's probably not, we're probably not even going to open wastegate. You're just going to have to really cruise like... I'm going to boot it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, nah, uh, we're gonna just have to like put it there. Anyway, we need to find a place to put this now. So let me get my wiring out of the way. So the way we need to work this, the way we are read into it is because we're doing single port and we're not doing fancy dual port or anything like that, this one becomes null and void. So oh. but I've just got this in, in a minute. Just in case when we go to the dyno, Jake says, no, we need to go dual port. So I'm putting this in so we could do it later. Easy to have the hose, not so easy to not have a fitting. There 
we go. So, this is what I prepared earlier. So, in here, I rewired that boost control that I said, the wires that we had originally running for it to run now into the Deutsch connector. Yep. That goes in there. This just sits freely in there. Doing its own thing. I'm gonna put that world's longest bolt through here, like so. Oh, lovely. And then this is gonna go on the bottom. That should sit in there. It's gonna be out of the way of heat because what's gonna melt first is the master cylinder. So if we know that we lose brakes and we're about to lose boost. <laughs> <laughs> so allow me to do that up and we're done. So from here, we need to run the intercooler piping and everything like that so that we can actually run the boost feed into this solenoid. I'm not gonna run that today because we need to get a new elbow. And because we're waiting for the turbo drain anyway, we might as well keep this place open as much as possible so we can actually fit this turbo drain up and get that working. But it gives you an idea of basically, basically where we're heading and what we're trying to do with this. So it's looking really good. Yeah, we're really close. We were hoping to get it running today, but with the turbo drain and that, it's just not gonna happen. But anyway, until we get into it next week, when we start tackling power steering. That's probably gonna be a whole job on its own, so. Yeah. Anyway, I hope you liked this episode. If you have, please make sure to consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It really goes a long way to help support us and help us do awesome stuff like this. And you get to see where this thing ends up and if it actually does make it into the low 11s or maybe even high 10s. And if it survives drag challenge, all those things. All those things can happen if you just subscribe to the channel. <laughs> if you'd like to support the channel even further, you can head on over to the website where you buy a bunch of merch, t-shirts, hoodies. Fully stocked now, we actually have it in stock. Uh, we have stickers as well too, and new designs coming shortly. Anyway, until we see you in the next episode, we'll see you then. Lovely, that looks sick, man. <laughs> I'll get a little pod filter or something. Looks like it. a cannon. That's crazy. I wonder how it's gonna dose with that. I'm very curious to hear how this thing doses, yeah. It's gonna dose differently because we've shortened up that elbow. You reckon that's what makes a difference? Yeah, that does, yeah. According to the VL uh, terminology, yeah. Yeah, right, okay. You type in Urban Dictionary, VL dose, it'll basically give you a full-on description on how, really? how to achieve the perfect dose. Does it really? No. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's a lot easier than doing on the HQ. Yeah, that's true. You, you, when you have a HQ, you just deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just it's like, I can't it fix it. <laughs> you just keep topping it up. Yeah. <laughs> it's all ready, Freddy. <clears throat> We're zippy today. Zippy, 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 yeah. Zippy! Oh, there. Ow! Oh, be careful, there's a light there. Oh, God, I hate this stupid light. <laughs> it's dumb. It doesn't work. And you dropped the roll, which just made your life a lot harder. I know. Oh, man, I really did make my life hard with that. <laughs> Don't let Nathan tie your shoes, people. <laughs> this is why he has zip up boots. <laughs> Hey, you got slip-ons! <laughs> We're not talking about me, are we? <laughs> Hoist the mainsail! <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Oh, that's my mullet, man. <laughs> <laughs> just, just spray right now while he's holding it. Oh, oh yeah. there's a big foot here. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> gonna get it's like the smoke of the fire. Wherever I go, the fumes are coming back. They're following me. You know what this means? There's gonna be stripped wires everywhere. <laughs> I thought of that as I was throwing stripped wires everywhere. <laughs> Look, there's one sitting on your overflow bottle. If I ever, yeah, if I ever work on your car, you know I've been here because there's little, little bits of wiring everywhere. Look how much better it looks. It does. It looks I, I would, so I much would cool. steer this thing manually just to have that look. <laughs> Armstrong steering. <Yeah. laughs> Maybe that should be next week's thumbnail, just you with a massive um, bicep. <laughs> Popeye, Popeye me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for the thumbnail for that, I'll say goodbye power steering and I'll like Photoshop in his bulging bicep. That's funny, yeah, do that. I like that. that. <laughs> that'll be that'll be funny.